praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Malik, the Quddus, the Rahman and the Rahim. And exalted may he be for having revealed to us the best of all his books, the Quran, the one that is Hudan lil Muttaqin. And we thank him for having sent to us the best of all his prophets, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the one that was sent as Rahmatan lil Alameen. As to what follows, my dear brothers and sisters, every single year we set a theme for the lectures in the month of Ramadan. And this year, inshallah ta'ala, the theme that has been chosen is in fact one of the most noble and one of the most important topics that every single Muslim should spend time understanding and learning and memorizing. And that theme is going to be an introduction to some of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The concept of the names and attributes of Allah is a central concept of the whole Quran. And in fact, I challenge you to even read three or four or five verses without coming across some of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we listen to our Qari recite the Quran, begin to pay attention and you will realize that almost every single verse incorporates within it one or two or three names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why, brothers and sisters, a knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is of the most fundamental knowledges of our religion. In fact, what is more important than knowing who is Allah? The first pillar of Iman is Al-Imanu Billah. And who is Allah? Our only source of knowledge with regards to Allah is His names and attributes. We have no other way of knowing who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And that is why our scholars mention that knowledge of Allah is half of Tawheed. And the other half of Tawheed is worshipping Allah. So all of Tawheed revolves around knowing Allah and then worshipping Allah. That's all of Tawheed. La ilaha illallah. You have to know who is Allah and then you worship Allah alone. And so in these series of lectures insha'Allah ta'ala, we will be concentrating on introducing in each and every single day we will concentrate on one and sometimes two names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And realize, my dear brothers and sisters, that a knowledge of Allah's names and attributes is the most noble knowledge. There is nothing that is more sacred, more blessed than a knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is because every knowledge gains its blessedness in proportion to the subject that is studied. And that is why... The person who studies the, the, the body, the doctor, is considered to be a more prestigious job, the, the fact of the matter, than somebody who studies, let's say, cars, even though society needs both. But what does society give the sharaf to? What does society give the prestige to? The one who studies the human body. Because the human body has a higher status than any creation of man. So what is the best, the best knowledge? What could be more noble knowledge than a study of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Since Allah is the most exalted, since Allah is the most blessed, since Allah is tabaraka wa ta'ala, there is no knowledge that is more a'la, that is more blessed and more holy and more sacred than the knowledge of Allah's names and attributes. And that is why in the Quran, Allah has commanded us to learn who He is. There is a command in the Quran, I'lam and I'lamu. This means learn and know. And it occurs around a dozen and a half or two dozen times in the Qur'an. And in fact, if you look at every single time Allah says, I'lam and I'lamu, the majority of them are followed by a name and attribute of Allah. I'lamu anna Allah ghafoor rahim. I'lamu anna Allah shaydul iqab. Wa'lam anna Allah. Know that Allah, know that Allah, know that Allah. So the primary command to know I'lam in the Qur'an is followed by some name or attribute of Allah because Allah wants us to know who He is. How do we expect to worship Allah if we don't know who Allah is? How will we love Allah if we don't know who Allah is? How will we fear Allah if we don't know who Allah is? How will we put our trust in Allah, our yaqeen, our tawakkul if we don't have a knowledge of who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is? And that is why knowledge of Allah is a central tenant of our Iman and our Tawheed. Our scholars mention that there is no science that causes our Iman to increase as much as a knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iman increases by many ways. Doing any good deed, reading the Quran, giving to the poor, sponsoring an orphan, all of these things increase our Iman. But what is the fastest, the quickest way 
What is the dosage of Iman that will be the maximum? Our scholars say nothing increases Iman more than a knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then number two, a knowledge of Rasulullah s.a.w. which is the seerah. These two knowledges increase our Iman like nothing else. And that is why once again, a knowledge of Allah and His names and attributes is a central component of our worship and our belief in Allah. And in fact, if you think about it, brothers and sisters, every single name of Allah will bring about a new knowledge about Allah that we didn't have before. When we learn the meaning of Al-Malik, Al-Quddus, Al-Salam, Al-Mu'min, Al-Muhaymin, Al-Aziz, Al-Jabbar, Al-Mutakabbir, Al-Ra'uf, Al-Rahim, and on and on. Each one of these names will bring about a new experience, a new yaqeen, a new love, a new hope. There is nothing of these names and attributes except that a knowledge of it will increase instantaneously our love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as I said there is nothing else that increases Iman like a knowledge of Allah's names and attributes and dear brothers and sisters realize that our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that there is no being who loves to be praised more than Allah and that is why he has praised himself you see any one of us when we praise anyone that praises Half true and half not true. Because none of us is perfect. But when Allah is praised, that praise does not even do justice to Allah. You see, when I praise you, there are faults that you, don't, that you have and I don't know about. And that is why we are told not to exaggerate in praising another human being. No human being is worthy of praise unconditionally. Only a conditional praise. You are a kind person. Sometimes. Nobody can be kind always. You are a gentle person sometimes. But no one can be praised unconditionally other than one being. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whenever we praise Allah, we will fall short of praising Allah. We cannot do justice in praising Allah. It is reported in the hadith in Sahih Bukhari that one of the nights of Ramadan, Aisha was trying to find the Prophet ﷺ and she couldn't find him. And... She, her hand moved around, it was pitch dark, and she finally felt the foot of the Prophet in sajda. And she li- whispered in, or she listened in to what the Prophet was whispering. And he was in sajda, in the middle of the night, praying to Hajjud. No one else was awake except him. And he's murmuring, and Aisha does not, he does not know that Aisha is paying attention. And Aisha overhears, and he says, Subhanaka la uhsi thana'an alayka, anta kama athnayta ala nafsik. How exalted are you, O Allah? I cannot do justice in praising you. Now pause here. Who is speaking? The best human being. The most knowledgeable human being. When is he saying this? In Salat al-Tahajjud. In Sajda. Can you imagine? The greatest human being doing the greatest act of worship at the greatest time imaginable. And he's in Sajda. And he says, Oh Allah, I cannot do justice in praising you. La uhsi thana'an alayk. Whatever words I utter cannot do justice in who you are. Anta kama athnayta ala nafsik. Only you, O oh Allah, can do justice in praising yourself. So what does this got to do with the names and attributes? The names and attributes of Allah are the highest form of praise. There's nothing higher than these names and attributes. And that is why Allah reminds us in the Quran in four times, four times this ayah occurs in the Quran. Four different times Allah says the same thing. And to Allah belong the most magnificent and the most perfect names. Al Asma Al Husna. I want you to memorize this phrase. Allah calls his names Al Asma Al Husna. And Al Husna is the feminine of Ahsan. And Ahsan means, as we all know, we should all know, Ahsan means the most perfect. Hassan means good. Ahsan means the most perfect. Allah's names are not Hassan. Allah's names are not just good. Allah's names are Ahsan, the best. There's nothing more magnificent, more beautiful, more perfect, more majestic than the names of Allah. Walillahi al asmaul husna. To Allah belong the most perfect, the most majestic, the most beautiful names. So what do we do with those names? Fadu'uhu biha. Make dua to Him using those names and one of the meanings of dua by the way isn't just raise your hands up one of the meanings of dua is to worship and so fadu'uhu biha worship him 
using those names. So one of the main goals of the names and attributes of Allah is to worship Allah with that knowledge. And therefore, dear brothers and sisters, this entire series we will be concentrating. Every day we'll do one name, sometimes we'll do two. And the final uh, the hadith for tonight is the beautiful hadith that really should strike us about how necessary it is to want to learn this knowledge. We should want to learn Allah's names and attributes. And being eager to learn Allah's names and attributes is a sign of Iman. It is reported in Sahih Bukhari that a, a Sahabi would recite Surah Al-Ikhlas in every single rak'ah. Before he began another surah, he would recite Fatiha, then Ikhlas, then another surah. And the other people complained. He was leading salah in another masjid. The other people complained and, and they said, we don't want you to recite Ikhlas in every rak'ah. And he refused and he said, either you choose me and I do as I please, or you go find another imam, I'm not going to change what I want to do. So they complained to the Rasulullah Wasallam. They said, Ya Rasulullah, this guy recites Surah Al-Ikhlas every single rak'ah between the Fatiha and what he's going to recite. So the Prophet said, go back and ask him that I want to know what is his reason. Why is he reciting Ikhlas in every rak'ah? So they went back and they asked him and he said, لأنها تصف الرحمن وأحب أن أقرأ صفته because Surah Al-Ikhlas it describes who is Ar-Rahman and I love to read Allah's descriptions قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد and we'll explain every single name in the course of these inshaAllah 30 lessons so he said because it describes Ar-Rahman do you know what the Prophet ﷺ said? he said go back and tell him that his love for this surah has caused him to enter Jannah. Why? Because when you love Allah, you will want to love Allah's names and attributes. And when you love Allah's names and attributes, then Allah Azza wa Jal will love you back. This whole series, inshaAllah, we will inshaAllah increase our love of Allah and increase our love of Allah's names and attributes. And we will study as many names as we can. And we'll also discuss some of the other aspects related to the names and attributes of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause this knowledge to be beneficial to all of us. Wajazakumullahu khayran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh